All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayamba, and welcome to our August 19, 2018 conference call for Ghana Tours for November 2018, May 2019, and also our, our Southern Africa journey, which includes South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana for November 2019. All these details for these tours can be found on our website at africaforthafricans.org and everything that we talk about in reference to our Ghana tour is based on the documentation that we have on our website that way everyone have the same uh, details in full. And over the last few months we have talked about uh, the complete segment of tour preparation including going over the tour overview, the tour itinerary in full, the preparation and departure list, what to pack, uh, visa details. Right now we're at a three-month period where we'll be leaving for Ghana in November uh, 2018 and the most important thing for that tour right now is for everyone to have a Ghana visa. So before I go further into other things, um, I'm just going to go over the Ghana visa for the one last time and then for those who are traveling with us for uh, May of next year, we're going to start talking about the Ghana visa again at the beginning of the year. But the only people that need to worry about a Ghana visa right now is the people that are traveling with us in November. And if you're getting a visa right now, you have to get a multiple entry because that visa is good for one to five years. The single entry visa is only good for three months, so get that visa mid next month. So you're getting it at a two month mark. So by the time you leave for Ghana, the visa will still be good. The worst thing to do is get a, a single entry visa way ahead of time and then you realize that your visa expires. And then now if you end up making it to Ghana, you, you have to get a visa on arrival, which is $150. And the reason I say these things is visa is the most important aspect of what we do. Uh, flight reservations is booked for everyone that's traveling with us for November. And everyone has been, everyone has been sent their flight itinerary uh, based on the reservations that was made. So you can use that to get your Ghana visa. I booked most of the routes for our May journey but we're still working on certain other segments. So I'll begin to start sending our flight itineraries ahead of time. That way it could just be sent ahead of time. Uh, that way you're clear on the flight process. Uh, but the good thing about when we're when we doing these journeys, uh, for those who are on the later journey, you can see the flow of how we do things. Uh, one of the main things that I have set up is I try to shoot as much highlight videos to give everybody a feel of what we do in Ghana. And I do my best to put up all of the recordings of the repatriation and business uh, conference. So the process of what we do there in Ghana is just based on making sure that we have everything clear with visas, tickets, um, and other things. Everybody's clear on the process of how the uh, airline operation works. And once, we are, once tickets are clear, uh, we will be talking with everyone about how to log into their, their ticket and check their routes, uh, add seats, and things like that. That's when the final booking, which will be between September 15th to the end of the month, uh, goes to have everyone name in the system. We check it off and then close out with a balance with the airlines. Uh, so while we're doing all of that, um, the visa is, is what we're looking for everyone to get, um, get started on. So everyone that's uh, traveling with us on both tours, I've sent a Ghana visa email. Now the visa email has uh, attachments that is important to detail to, to, to fill out and be clear. So the best thing I recommend is to print out all the attachment and the email itself. Uh, so you're going to see a sample application of the, uh, the visa with, with my details. You can edit it. The hotels that we always stay in Ghana is at the Micklin Hotel in Accra Kumasi and then uh, One Africa in Cape Coast, Elmina. Uh, so those will be standard and you, just, you can change out your details. There's also a blank application. Uh, there's a a list of our requirements to process the Ghana visa. And what I'm going to do is go through some of those, uh, I'm going to go to the full requirements. For the Ghana visa, you, what you want to do is fill out the first application. And then once you fill out the application completely, you're going to make a copy of it uh, sign, with it signed and dated. And you're going to put a passport style photo on each of the applications. So you need two passport style photos for your application and then to application itself. If you want to make a, keep a copy for yourself, that's absolutely fine. Just uh, make sure that's in the package. 
Now, on the application, it's just basically asking you for general information, uh, your full name and details based on your passport itself. Uh, section one, uh, then two, ask for about your uh, professional occupation. Four, business address or residential address. Four, proposed date of departure. Um, and you, you know, our situation, you put November 16th. Uh, traveling by air. Uh, purpose of journey, you can just put uh, tourism. Uh, name, address, and numbers of reference in Ghana. Uh, the application that you're getting is the newer version of the application, and what I'm doing is just run off the information that's on there. So excuse the numbers on the application. It's, uh, the new application is, has two parts. So the details for the contacts, uh, it will ask you for the person. So when you look at the new sample application, you'll be able to just use those same details. All right, so everything that you literally have on application, just base details that you know based on the tour you're going on and based on your situation as a, the person applying. So it's a simple application to fill out, and everything uh, that you need is you know, accessible. If it comes to a situation where you're not clear on something with the visa or you have a question about certain things, uh, just send back a quick email, and you get a quick reply or, or, or a text message, or you can just call me directly. Now, once you um, start putting these things in your package, uh, one of the things that's required is a bank statement. So you can just use a general bank statement. If you need to cross out anything, uh, that's fine. What what the uh, Ghanaian officers are looking for, they're looking to see information matched up to show that you're a real person with a real address, have a bank account, and things like that. So that's part of the, your verification. So when you see it, it you know, hopefully it doesn't look uh, strange, but that's all they want you to do. Um, and they're not looking to take any money out your account or do any uh, kind of scam or anything. It's, it's impossible. I give people my account number all the time, and the only thing they could do is put, uh, you know, put money in their account. Um, so that's a, a simple situation. And the flight itinerary is in there, the visa, um, application, the bank statement. You put your $60 single entry or $100 multiple entry. Use a post office money order. Do not send any personal check and do not send any cash. And once you put everything together, what you want to get is a prepaid return envelope and with your address, that way once the embassy is finished with your paperwork, they're going to put your passport, and inside your passport, you're going to see a Ghana visa. You just need to open it and verify it. So those are the most important things that we need everyone traveling with us to be working on uh, coming up for November. And I can go on and on in the details, but uh, it's just something that we actually want us to print out and go through and generate questions. So what I want to do is I want to open up the call just specifically to find out if anyone have any questions about Visa, and then I want to process and onto some other things on the website. All right, so anyone who have any questions about the Visa process and the Visa process only, if you can press uh, star six to unmute yourself. Uh, Carla, can you repeat your name? Uh, this is Enobi. Enobi, greetings, brother. How are you? Um, what is your question? Where it says nationality, um, I think you have African. Yeah, that's my specific application. I wasn't born in America. I was born in Jamaica. So sometimes it depends on the application that I fill out. I might put African Jamaican or Jamaican or something. I'll put any, but I, don't, I just don't put American. Or sometimes I may have to put America because I'm an American citizen. So all of those are you know, going to be correct answers. They just want something. The most important thing you really worry about is just make sure you fill, you know, fill all the blanks out with relative answers. Okay. Okay. So, uh, for That's yourself, all I want in America, you should, I would say just put out African American or, or American citizen. Okay. All right. Thanks. Absolutely. And uh, is all other details about the tour good so far? Um, you, uh, I definitely have to connect with you so we can go through some of the stuff. Then, uh, then you know, you let me know if you're clear, and then we'll just get you locked in. No problem. No problem. Thanks a lot. Excellent. All right, next uh, caller, can you um, give us your name and where you're calling from and your question? Yes, this is Diane, and I'm calling from Alabama. Um, on page two of the application, do we fill it out practically the way that you have it, like name of hotel, guest house, uh, contact person? Is that going to be the same as the, your um, example app? 
Yes, exactly. It's the same hotels we've been using, and it's the same uh, owners and managers we deal with. Okay, excellent. That's it for me. Thank you. All right, perfect. I'll thank you for your question. Um, next question with the um, Ghana visa. All right, perfect. So that uh, means no one have any questions about the visa. So everyone, I remember that uh, if you don't have a Ghana visa email with the attachments and things like that, you can just send me an email in general and just request for it, and I'll just uh, email you the package. And then for those who have questions, just reply with your questions, and then we'll talk about it. All right, so family, let's move on to another segment of things. I'm going to go directly to our website, africaforafricans.org, and just talk about the reference of things we have on the site and then go through the, um, the, tour, the tour topic list. We just usually go through them randomly and not so much in a sequence. Our website, uh, africaforafricans.org, it's uh, set to just give you some nice music and give you some nice photos. And um, I will still work on uploading some new photos, but that's uh, right there shows a key 10 years in you know, what we've been doing from 2006 to 2016. So. I'm still celebrating that 10 years of our journey, and then uh, I'm going to definitely add these two last fascinating years, uh, 2017 and 2018. But uh, in general, uh, I have all of these photo galleries on our Facebook page, uh, so it's every single tour I've ever done in uh, Ghana, all 14, and from 2006 to 2018. All right, so family, once you go to our website, uh, africaforafricans.org, um, just scroll down on the left side of the website and look to the main menu. Now, all the things you're going to need for the tour, I do send emails out in reference to certain things, but uh, in general, this, all of it is right here. So the first tour that we have on there is uh, Ghana Tour November 2018. So once you click on that link, you have all those details right there to access, and we just ask everyone to read through it, tour overview, itinerary, general terms, visa, and uh, preparation details, you know, those are the most important ones uh, there. And, and so that's your direct reference right there. And also when I send a receipt and, uh, and things like that, you'll see the link in there. You know, naturally, we can't force or make anyone to read the information, but that will make everything smoother, especially you know, we, don't, we want people to limit certain questions when we get to Ghana that's irrelevant to certain, certain things so you can focus on the country. Um, so. We have a tour book that's uh, designed with the full program, uh, including itineraries, so you don't have to bring scraps or copy of itineraries. Uh, that way you have a book that's dedicated to the full program, in, including the investment and repatriation uh, details. Now the tour book itself, when you scroll down further past the tour, uh, you know, the tours that we have coming up, uh, you'll, see Ghana, you'll see the Ghana tour book. And it's just a flip book and also there's a PDF, and it'll just show a list of the last several books that I did myself. So the upcoming tour that we have, I'll be modifying the previous book, uh, which I'll be working on very soon, um, and making it work in reference to what we're doing in Ghana. So it's a lot of modifications since certain things that are in there we're not, we won't be doing, and it's a shorter journey. All right, we scroll down, we see our Ghana tour May 2019, and it's the same exact information. Only thing different is that the dates, uh, three days shorter, and then uh, costs a little bit more, but it's the same exact details and information. Now, the Brazil um, journey for July 2019, 2019, I still have it up there, um, and I'll more likely work on just removing it. Um, you know, sometimes you make deals and it just don't work out and don't go through. So uh, this is one of them. Um, it's, you know, I understand when you have the Olympics and then you have the World Cup back-to-back -back in your country, everybody wants big money, but at the same time, too, you know, it's hard to sell the tours based on what, you know, you know, based on what you know, certain people want or expect. So you try to make adjustments and do certain things. So that don't seem to be working uh, right now. But the tour that is working is South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe for November 2019. We have several people who are committed to the journey. And then also, if you just want to do the South Africa part, uh, that's 3300 and it covers all tickets, uh, all meals. It's an all-inclusive package. So you'll see two separate price on the tour details and we click on it. So we're still looking for more people to join that one and looking for questions. Uh, but usually we uh, won't be really going over it as like what we're doing with the Ghana tour because it's not a whole lot of interest or we don't have a full group yet. But I try to just uh, go to it, send out the newsletters and keep uh, everyone posted on it. But yes, that is a goal for November 2019. 
and I'll be working on the 20, 20 schedule once I get back from Ghana in November of uh, this year. And once you scroll down to the main menu, other things you're going to see uh, is conference call. It's just conference call is just a list of the link that takes you to the YouTube videos and give you just the uh, conference call call in numbers and this basic uh, details. Uh, the conference call uh, recordings uh, have a specific section on YouTube uh, in a playlist that I keep putting all the calls in. That way other people can use it as information to process, to, to be clear on traveling and doing things in Africa. Uh, so it's just something that uh, we share. It's like uh, we have people that are not coming on the tour and I do help them to get over and do certain things. Uh, it's, uh, it's a painful situation because it's, it's um, a lot of work to do and a lot of things to do. And it's just so much perpetrators here, especially in the black America. You have so much people that's quick to just get on YouTube and come up with organization name and, you know, and then talk about what's going on in Africa, what's going on in Ghana, why is Ghana not this, why is Ghana not that. I'm, I tell people that I've lived the life in Ghana as far as going back and forth and doing things with a lot of our prominent folks that help get citizenship set up the Black Star Lion Credit Union. It's a whole lot of work. So we have these clowns from that, the Black Africa Infrastructure Organization. And, you know, you have, you have one or two of the people who just shows a level of this jealousy. You know, we have a business. It is a profitable business because we have a lot of people to pay and things like that. Um, so I'm also saying things because you are going to see things online on YouTube and people just showing a straight up level of just jealousy and hatred, but I'm dedicated to connecting my brothers and sisters to the content, and we do things at the highest professional level. I designed my office here in Jonesboro to be here and answer calls and go through things and be able to give quick response and be able to help our folks in the process. Uh, and, I, you know, so sometimes I say things like, you know, it's like for those people who, who feel like we should do certain things in a specific, another specific African country, and this is a general talk for this, our brothers and sisters in general. No one is going to stop you. Go out there, and people like myself is even open to doing things in other countries if someone lead the way. But I felt that uh, we, and most of the people that we deal with are a lot older now, and we're asking for a generational help of people to step their game up. We have a movement we're building. Yeah, what I'm going through is a situation. I just went through the tour, um, the tour schedule itself, and I was explaining to everyone that this is a profitable business and things like that because we are accountable to be accountable for a lot of things. Even things that I don't want to be accountable for, you have to be accountable for because people are making deals and buying land and doing things in the name of Africa for Africans and Bomani basically saying, we, you know, we have your back in situations. You know, so uh, when you're on YouTube, you, see, you will see certain comments and they're going to come and say certain things, but I also tell people to follow the work, see the people who are actually doing certain things. Um, you know, so we have people here that want to discredit our nation in, 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 in Ghana by telling us how we should be doing it and we should be getting a municipality and getting, getting a million acres of land and be building this and we doing this and we should be doing this for the government. And I tell people that the repatriation investment of what we have, uh, which is what you, you know, the link right here doesn't give much uh, details of our full repatriation. So we use a YouTube video link to show people practical videos and all the people that we bring at the conference. Nation building in Africa is, is, is work. No one should be allowed to just come up with an organization call themselves Black African Infrastructure Organization and just talk about nation building and build nothing. Now, I'm sick and tired of these weak punks who just want to talk about, you know, because people sometimes they're like, well, you guys should have a whole city in Africa. You should have this in Africa. I was like, I've been going there. We've been doing work. The citizenship did not come that's that simple. I'm a cousin, many other people. That energy and energy of myself and other brothers and sisters bringing people there, doing business. You think if we weren't doing business and doing things in Ghana, Ghana government would just offer us any kind of citizenship. It's very hard to get the attention of our brothers and sisters in Africa because the Asians are coming and dropping money on, on desks of ministers all over Africa, buying our government. So people have to come together and say, we're going to do this for our children, our future, and build communities. I understand people want to see us have a nation, and that will happen when more people get up and build these communities, build these infrastructures that we need and do things like that. So right now, I'm at a situation where I just, it's, and I guess you have to expect that after while you're doing business for a while, you're doing good business, and, you know, people love what you're doing, and you, I guess you're going to have people like that, you know. But I, I didn't expect that from, 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 you know, from certain people. I expect people who are intelligent and are professionals and have certain skills understand that we need them in Africa. We don't need them to be making YouTube videos and talking about what other people are doing, saying we're not doing it right and not doing certain things. 
you know, I'll tell people a simple thing. Pick a country and start the nation building process. And let me know how successful you are and how far you get in a short, in a short or long period of time. You know, um, our ancestors in the last few generations, you know, I, I give it to our ancestors. The generation has been fighting, fighting, little by little trying to get us in Africa. And now we have a good movement of energy now doing things in Africa. And we have people now confusing people, trying to mislead them, thinking that they can just go to any parts of Africa, deal with governments, and just build a whole city and a whole nation. It's like, you know, I, and I like the movie Black Panther. It's a beautiful, wonderful movie, and it's, it is a movie, and it's not realistic. And, you know, people think that we're just going to build some magical city in Africa. It takes getting up every day and working, and this is part of that business. I'm with us, and all the people we deal with, we're in a world. And, yes, we do have business for ourselves, so we have people who don't have the business we have, and they tend to just, oh, they're just doing business and making money off black people. And I take that as an insult, and I take that personal. You know, you know, I was like, do you know that people give up their careers? You know, give up my military airline careers? I'm a kiss, so on, of these, you know, all the people that join together to form the things, the little bit of energy that we have in Africa. So that's our mission and our purpose, is to really do the things and not talk about it, and do it in a business professional manner, because you can come up with different organizations and things like that, and you can have people sign up to your network site, and then all of this stuff, and that's fine, and that's it's fun, and maybe cool and everything and have talk shows and things like that. But it's a whole different story, story when you have to actually get up in the morning, be on a call, and you're, and, and you're responsible to make sure deals go through. You know, you have people here that want to do things and people there in Ghana that's ready to receive them, and you have to be the person in the middle to bond it and make it work. And you're putting your life in the middle of that because anything goes wrong, you are responsible. And I'm not the person that's getting this money and everything. So it, you know, so it's become stressful. So if you have, so families here, you see me go off on certain people. It's only the people that are perpetrators and just, and talking about things instead of joining the fight. I respect my brothers and sisters to the highest level. My life is dedicated every day for for the general black man and woman and family itself. And that's our movement. Our movement is about the black African family relocating to Africa. But I can't expect people to move to the African continent just like that and set things up just like that. So I've always told my brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we can get land for them set up, help them with certain things to do things. So that's been like 12 years of my life, not knowing anything, but studying a whole bunch of books with some of our best scholars and connecting with different organizations and great scholars and you know, being told that you, know, you have to continue an energy to get us in Africa and, and taking that as a serious responsibility. So I can't accept perpetrators as talking stuff that's talking. And that's the bad thing about the Internet nowadays. Any clown could just get up there and have a, a channel and videos up and talk stuff and discredit people, discredit our ancestors. You know, like I, I get upset when I pe hear people talk about, well, they, you know, it's like it doesn't matter what happened in the previous generation. Sacrifices were made, hard work and dedication were made, and we have to do the same, and we have to be respectful to each other at a high level. And, you know, so I don't go out looking for fights with people, but I will defend, will defend our pan-African movement to get our people relocated. So let me uh, finish up my last bit of uh, rambling on about, uh, you know, about uh, the haters and people like that. So when we run operation, uh, I don't take anything lightly. I, just, I always have my military guys with us to protect us and look out for us, and we work together to protect our people because whether it's, whether, it's, whether it's the crazy Ghanaians or the crazy people here and things, you know, we have to protect ourselves because this is a movement of energy that not everybody agree with it. You know, and I even get into conferences where we're talking and people like discrediting us because they don't want, they think we're wasting our time in Africa and we should be trying to build a black. I tell them, I tell our brothers and sisters this: we have done everything we needed to do to, to to be respected in America and to have the things we needed, and we have not gotten it. So don't blame people like myself for saying, brothers and sisters, come to Africa, learn about the roots and culture. Let's connect. Let's do business together. Let's make some things happen. And if people cares about making sure America works the way it works, then do what needs to be done. Uh, don't discredit other people that, that believe certain other things. And I felt like that's the same thing that, you know, in the era of Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey saw a vision and other people just hating on a vision because they say, you're a fool, man. You, are, you need to be telling our people to stay in America and, 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 and join integration. You know? And that's the issue that I have with some of our brothers and sisters, and I will always bang and I will destroy them. You know what I'm saying? Li digitally, lyrically, whatever it is, uh, outdoing them and things, you know, because at the end of the day, the, the issue that we have to move forward is not white people, is the internal enemy. Once we move out the internal enemy, we are free and nations rebuilt 
and we'll be a glorious people again. You know, um, you know the enemy within is is put on the front line to stop. You know, you know so it's uh, you know it's interesting. So this mission in Africa is very important, and it's beyond just the fact that this is a profitable business or anything like that. You know, uh, so I really just take that as and so. When people just come at us like that, because we do have prices and things like that on our website. So some people say, man, they're just getting rich. Are they doing this? I tell people, compared to what the white people are selling their tourists when you see how, who is getting rich. You know, so um, this is beyond any financial figure. The dedication of what we have, you know, business has to be done in nation building or anything. You know what I mean? And sometimes I have business with people and if they can't do business like we need them to do business, we let them go and we don't do business with them because we can't compromise the future of our children, the future of making sure that we do the right thing to make sure we have what we need, you know, and not just get into big talks that we're going we're gonna to take over one African country and that's going to be the nation of black people in African diaspora. That's the, you know, and things like that. I tell people, wake up out that dream. Once you get in the game, it's just like a basketball game or, or, or boxing match. You're just out there, man, he should be doing this, he should be doing that. You get in the ring and you get in, you get in that court, it's a whole different story. You won't be talking that much, you know. So anyway, family, on. Um, I uh, just want to share that from my heart uh, because uh, it's been an entourage of hate coming up and they've been coming from left to right. So we've been shutting them down, but most focus is we're focusing on what we do in Africa. But sometimes these things are necessary. So as you scroll down to the main menu, um, you're going to see a link that says registration. The registration link is uh, it's fine. Everyone who's coming on the journey, uh, do register so we have your details. But also we have another information we send out like for passport, which which that way we have the specific information. There's no typos or mistakes on the registration form. So that may be somewhat a little bit duplicate uh, request, but um, a more important than getting the passport uh, information back versus a registration form, um, because usually by then I have all the other details. And now as you scroll down, I uh, just have some basic uh, links on there. You know, Marcus Garvey Vision. I uh, got some uh, great uh, articles from just reading uh, the different books about Marcus Garvey. So I'm so passionate about uh, the work of uh, repatriation and investment because uh, you know it's uh, when when you know Marcus Garvey shared the dynamics of it, which is just relevant to the to this day. Basically saying that we have done all and everything, and that was 100 years ago. So now we even see ourselves doing all and everything, and then we're you know, it's like we're still stuck in the same position. So that energy is resurrecting people like myself and many of our people like Imacus and our crew of folks there in Ghana that's just dedicated to that life. Uh, so investments, um, we tend to just use, use the investment link on the repatriation link is just general links, but uh, it's so much more so what we have on the uh, YouTube videos because I figure the best thing to do is just record a conference and the details and the presentation. And then um, as far as about us, I uh, do have the attachment for the PowerPoint um, presentation, and it's just a general presentation, uh, a background, um, how we got here, the future of what we're doing and everything, which the future is definitely our repatriation communities that we look to build you know, all over Ghana and all over Africa, which will connect and just, you know, do more and more good business together as a people along with our you know, Ghanaian brothers and sisters. And so scrolling up uh, from the uh, website, um, I'm scrolling down from the website, uh, you'll see links to uh, Facebook and YouTube, and uh, we have a black guide for investing in Africa. That's uh, a nice little link where you can click on it and order the book, and I'll send it out uh, right away. All right, so family, that's uh, the website, uh, our details just, uh, in general, and all of our documentation. You'll see all of the group pictures of this, all brothers and sisters. So it's a tour only for brothers and sisters looking to connect to their roots. I, and on that note, uh, before I go to a few other things, uh, let me open up for questions. So family, uh, you can press star six to um, mute and unmute yourself. All right, everybody seem to be shy. All right, uh, well, um, and like I was saying, most of the information is just, you know, it's right there in your face. So uh, I don't really like reading all that details. I'm usually trying to generate questions. So I'm just trying to do as much overview as possible on all the things. All right. So um, let me uh, go back to our topics and I'll just uh, look over our topics and see if there's things that we need to cover that we haven't covered recently. All right. So um, we'll go to a few things on the topic uh, list. Now, one of the biggest things that we have going is the school supply uh, and donation energy.
but uh, more so the request from the orphanage uh, slash school uh, in Trinity and the uh, school that we have in uh, El Mina, Akoma Academy. They're requesting for more financial donations to do maintenance and upgrades on their school, uh, get toilet repair. So for those who are interested in the financial donation, I would say bring it specifically, and then when you get to that individual school, you just put it in the bowl, and it will be given directly to the administrator. And then the school supplies and black dolls and everything else will be there in circulation um, to you know, do our best to just, you know, show some kind of love. Uh, and once again, I mean, the one or two schools that we support is not going to fix the problem entirely in Africa. So I tell people don't hold that on us. Uh, just join the fight and, you know, maybe someone else can do another school or someone else can do something else. Um, and I don't want it to be where we just go into Africa and it's about us just giving and donating because it's not about that. We do have to build the communities and infrastructure we need to do. But, it's some, but you know, we can all participate in different things. And in, in general, you know, we're showing, you know, we're showing a sincere effort and energy of trying to connect uh, with our ancestral land and our own brothers and sisters to make something work. So it's work, that, it's work and it's more work and it's more work. So I tend to just focus on a glue to connect with other people to get these things done and not just think about myself or even my own family, my own child. Uh, so, you know, those are sacrifices that have to be made to, for us to rise, you know, rise together. One of the, uh, the main things we have is two Ancestor Day. Ancestor Day, one, is when we leave from Kumasi and we head to uh, Asin Manso. So Asin Manso is in the central region, and that's when you drive down Kumasi, it's about four hours from, from, from Kumasi south. And it's, where our it's an old slave market, and it's where our ancestors, our enslaved or stolen African ancestors, were washed up before they were marched down to the dungeons for auction in whether at Cape Coast or Almina. So we ask everyone to wear the colors of you know, the revolution of the nation of uh, red, black, green, and gold, the colors of the country of Ghana, the, the, you know, the pan-African nation itself. And you can wear all black, all red, all green, all gold, or you can wear a combination. It's just a blend and harmony. And now, Ancestor Day 2 is when we go to the Holocaust dungeon, Cape Coast Holocaust dungeons, and we wear all white. Um, and it's a trip because I had these two fake roster brothers, Titus and Tyree. They came on a tour with me, and they were supposed to assist me. And it was like an embarrassment. It's like everybody was just in all white, ready to go. And they tried to play me by just wearing all black, thinking I wasn't going to tell them not to come to the dungeon. It's like... Anyone specifically, you don't want to come to the Holocaust dungeons. You don't have to come to the dungeons. You don't have to do anything on the tour that you spend your money and paid for. It's not a forced situation. I, I've had to escort people because they were upset and cursing and pissed off and ready to start grabbing white folks and, and lynching them. I had to just like, you know, I understand your frustration and stress, but that's going to draw too much attention to us, and it's, going to be, and it's not going to solve anything. Uh, so, and understand the, 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 the stories in there are horrible. It, it's, you know... But we would discredit our ancestors by being there and not sharing it with our brothers. So these two guys are on our staff, and everybody on the tour decided to go, and it was all in white. And, you know, so, you know, I ended up um, having worked with Imacus to get them some, you know, some whites to go because they were supposed to be a part of our staff also. And, uh, you know, it's another thing, too, when we have brothers and sisters that are working with us in Africa, it's what it is. Uh, you are there to protect our tour members, you're there to look out for them. You're, you know, things can happen, and we need our guys to be on standby. I don't know what can happen or what might happen because nothing has ever happened. It's a peaceful country. But people like myself have a military mind, and from just being in the Navy for those four years, from 18 to 22, and a lot of those things have just taken more effect on me because I've been, I'm doing more and more serious business, and the best that I've ever seen it done in my life is the Navy. Execution, if they want a world leader killed or whatever, if they want to invade your country or whatever, they make certain decisions and have their people do certain work, and it's done. I have guys like myself working on airplanes so they can load up with bombs and bomb people, things like that. But my point is, you know, it's, it's, you know when you're thinking about getting things done, you have to be serious with your organization and logistics. Uh, and we as a people, we have a world there in Ghana that we can build, and the level of discipline has to be there. So if we are offering our own brothers and sisters opportunity and building with them, we need them to be respectable as much as possible, you know, and, you know, and people ask me, did I talk with certain people? Oh, yeah, I talk with people all the time. I sit down and talk with people who go over things, and, we, and then when, and then it's, and so when people turn around and still play you, you know, so uh, if you see a video of me talking about two fake Rasta bums, that's those two guys, uh, just, you know, we 
pay for them to come on a tour to be staff and to help out and do certain things and you just basically just didn't live up to certain things. Now you as a tour member you won't see these things because it's, you know, it's business as usual and things that is handled in different ways but you will get your professionalism on a tour and everything because I will make every single person that's committed to the tour working on our staff and crew do their jobs to the highest level. Driver, guide, assistant and so on and so on. You know, and you know, because then you know, I'm being held accountable, and I have to hold other people accountable. Because I'll promise everybody the journey of a lifetime, and the, and and I'll promise everybody that you 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 know you cannot find a better journey that's gonna show you that love and connect with you. And we you know, we dedicate our life to that. So you know, even the ancestor day and going to the dungeons, all those things are just an important part of it. Uh, because once you're in the dungeons, you're like, how could our ancestor survive this? Like, I, you know. Like sometimes we just lock people in a, in a cell for a few minutes and then people be just ready to get out and it's not trying to like torture people or making them feel what ancestors felt because you're not going to feel that because the pain was just incredible. I mean, you have to think about starving, you have to think about being around your own brothers and sisters and being having to deal with certain disease and certain things and you're, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. I don't think any of us can ever just imagine that because, you know, so... And nevertheless, that's, that's a part of that connection, but that shows how, you know, our resilience and our strength and our struggle in the African diaspora. And even when I took a group to Brazil, that was to connect. Because most of the slaves, you know, you hear about the Portuguese, Portuguese and the ships going, where, where did the ships go? A lot of them went to Brazil. So I went to Rio and South and I took a crew of people. We did our documentation and everything. And it's just to show the level of our struggle and show the level of that, you know, we, you know, this is what it is, and we have to rise from it that we, as an African black people, have no friends. All we have is us. It's the people that are focused and interested in certain level of pan Africanism because others are clearly distracted. So it's, you know, it's no easy task, but it has to be done. And so we're asking for people to just, hey, just you know, come on board and connect and just, make, just do some things in Africa together. And it's not, it's not fantasize, it's hard work, it's a lot of struggle. You hear about people losing money in business deals and things like that, and that's why we've built a network to where if you're trying to get something done, I'm in the middle of it, and I'm, I'm, fighting, for my, I'm fighting for the future of our family. Because you know, deals don't go right and, things, and people lose money and things that happen, then people will turn around and say, I don't want to do nothing in Africa. You know, I'm just going to stay in America and just accept my, my faith. And that's not what we want. So um, I, go, I go hard on this, this, so that's why I'm available, and I'll consistently just have con c continuous communication with anyone that's just you know, want more information, need to talk about anything, and you know. So here I am. So the list of topics uh, we've gone through them and gone through a lot of the details. What I really want is just I'm looking for some more questions. So I'm going to open things up for the next 10 minutes for questions. So press star six to unmute yourself, give your name, where you're calling from. You, know, you can let us know what you're interested in and which tours. Give us your question in this uh, dialogue. So, all right, family, the line is open. All right, family, the line is open. If you want to talk about the flight itinerary, the tour overview, the visa, what to pack, what to bring. Uh, if you have any questions about repatriation investment, um, any questions about the videos, uh, any kind of presentation, anything, the line is open for your question. Um, last few months we've gone over all of the same information over and over. Hi, right, uh, Nifa Tari, uh, what is your question? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, can you? Um, yes, yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's just Tari out of Houston. I was uh, wanted to find out what is it that you actually need. I, I do have a business here and my engineering is my profession. So um, what is it that you think you may need for um, helping the people in Ghana? No, we're not trying to help the people in Ghana. We're trying to build things in Ghana to where, uh, a, a, uh, example, uh, we're, we're, I'm always working on land sites. Uh, Fianco was one of the first ones. I uh, worked up there in Benin Village. I worked with other people to bring people around to the sites so people can buy land, build their homes, and help other people do the same. And it's not an easy task to ask you because it takes you know, someone coming to the country and wanting to live. So I've been able to get uh, several people to move to the country and do things. That's you know, not even scratching the surface of anything, but... It's you know it's what's needed in Africa. You need people who have you know who have great skills because we have to look at the brain drain. Majority of the sharp, smart uh, people from the African continent who have skills and things like that are in these Americas and uh, the European uh, countries, uh, getting top dollars and will never go back to any of those countries. I put my life on it for the most part unless 
they get ostracized after dealing with something or real terrible to turn them off uh, here. Uh, so it's going to take the people from the African diaspora who feel it's a way that they want to connect to the ancestors to go there and build engineering corporations, um, build factories, and do the things that need to be done. Uh, so with, you know, you try your best to connect individuals to group, and that's why we have the conference. But the main thing we're looking for people to is get buy land, build their homes, and build their enterprises. Okay, well that's that's my intention. We talked before about that. So one of the things I am interested in doing is actually buying a couple of acres of land and to um, you know, progress with my business over there to be able to be an asset to um to the village. So that's something I am desperately looking forward to do because my intent is to move from here over to there. Awesome, absolutely. So it's um one of those things where it's um it's not easy to get anyone to go to Africa and do certain things, so we just set things up to help people with the whole, the full process, um, and you know, and that's always just going off about stupid people who just think that you can just call some government in, in Africa and build a nation like overnight or do all of this stuff. And I mean, it's this is like serious work, and you're asking people to sacrifice their lives and their career, you know, and things like that, uh, for the greater good of the, the future of their children. And, and even in that case, it's just not as simple as that. So, uh, I got two land sites right now that I'm working with. One is in uh, and one is uh in Buduata, this is like the central region. It's basically two hours away from Accra and puts you right in the middle with beach access to the most tropical part of the country. You know, so you, know, you have to have do land searches and there's so much other things to be done. But the goal is whenever we go there again and gone like we've always done is to take it to these sites. And then um, we have our folks who are from the African diaspora that's been there dedicating their life to make sure that we build true communities in there they're not on, on, on a fallacy that we can just build, build some, some fictitious nation, you know, in a nation or a, build a fictitious nation in Africa like Wakanda, and this, it's just that simple. You know, so that's the connection right there. And, and, it's, you know, and most of the people are coming on the tour, they're coming to check out God and everything. So it's, I know it's not about this repatriation investment, but we still have to give it that push and want to see, you know, maybe in five, ten years or when people retire, thinking about living in Ghana and doing things. So I just feel like all of this energy helps and it will transform the next 20 years in that country. Thank you, Bomani. Absolutely. All right, uh, family, anybody, have any, uh, anybody else have any questions? Yes, I do. Yes. Um, how, what is the process for operating your business in um, Ghana? Do you guys uh, walk us through that process? I mean, I have definitely not. A clothing line that trademarks for the USA, and then I'm an herbalist, and I have a website uh, uh, that um, people can go to and uh, purchase herbs, and it teaches them how to use herbs. But I also want to do it on the ground, and I was wondering if there are specific things we need to do before we can start operating, so we don't get into any trouble for operating without a license. So do you guys walk us through that? Yeah, that's what, that's, that's what I dedicate my life to. Uh, you come on a tour, um, I introduce you to all the people that's going to physically help you. I usually recommend that you stay in the country maybe an extra two weeks. Uh, one of my uh, one of our you know, folks in Ghana, like Dr. Sharita, has been one of my, my best, uh, you know, best uh, you know, this, uh, sister there, and uh, she has you know, she you know, showed a few people this, the experience on the, on the ground, but I also have my uh, business consultants. That's who would take you to the bank, take you to the take you to land commission to make sure your, your land is clear, and handle things for you. Uh, what I do is the uh, you know, administrative work here to get everyone going, and then the accountability work to make sure whatever deal you make or whoever, make sure I got the ace card and make sure that everything works good and no one messes anyone over. Do you have to be a landowner in order to um, have a business in uh, Ghana? No, you don't have to be an elected owner. You can go there and rent an apartment for, and then operate your business if you want. Um, you know, nothing, and get a small office if you need. But it's something where I recommend you have a business plan together, be clear on it. As far as people and the people that's going to help you to do things, for me that's the simplest thing. I spent the last 10 years in Ghana specifically trying to find the best people I can trust with my life and trust with people money to be there to where I just all I have to do is make a phone call and say, I have this person coming in and they're looking to make this deal or whatever and it gets handled. And then the good thing about when you come on a tour, all those people you meet directly 
and then you now this be a direct introduction. This person is looking to stay longer and they're looking to get this accomplished. I mean, all of those things would be done prior ahead based on confidence call. Once you know you're committed and we know your intentions of what you're doing, and we, we'll, you know, so anyone that has that energy, we offer the full support to get things going. Uh, we have have people that um, helping them work, you know, work certain deals, and they may not be coming on this tour next year. They may be coming in the future, but uh, we do our best just to to help people. And one of the things is I can account for is that. The people I deal with, they're accountable because I'm one of the people, you know, I just hold, I hold people accountable. That's, you know, uh, that's why we have, you know, we have had a great level of success in business. Uh, and, you know, it, you know, so far so good. Uh, just working just to expand as much as possible to where we can help people with bigger projects and just have our own security force during Ghana to where if someone has an issue, we tell our security force and they handle it to where, People are not losing thousands of dollars. Or I mean, you know, I get you know, I get tired of hearing. It irritates me because when money like that is lost, then the things that's supposed to be built don't get built because any gun in that's robbing anyone or ripping anybody off, they're not using it to build factories and build things. You know, they're using it to spend on white people stuff, cars, things like that. So, and I hope I'm not throwing anybody off in the conversation, but it's just I'm like frustrated to the point where it's like. It's like we're trying to build things and, you know, it's like you're trying to get people to be, you know, so that's why I have this accountable system. And, you know, anyone who defies anything that we do, it, they dealt with harsh. And, you know, so no one, you know, and we all, and all of us are in the same life together. So if we, any of us mess anything up, we mess enough for our children and, our, and ourselves. So uh, that's what we're built there in Ghana. So I can easily just tell you, you know, ready to do your business and you have all the things together. It's the simplest coming with us. And, and, and even before that, it's as simple as just having the, the, one of those conferences that I have almost on a daily basis where I'm in the middle and I'm talking to somebody from the African diaspora that want to do things in Ghana and then I have one of my consultants, the best person on the job based on what you're looking to do, to verify everything and then the connection is made. Bomani, um, have you guys considered um, building a um, – business small so that if people come and you see that they do have a viable business and they're ready to get started, they can rent the space from you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, it's just I would love to. I wish I was a billionaire. <laughs> I would do all the things that need to be done. Um, but, you know, I only can play the part that I can do, which is to be the person that connects the deal. So, yes, I do have people there that you can rent space from and things like that, but it's not our space and not where we have. It's just business people there in Ghana. Like I'm talking more with business people uh, from Ghana and America that, you know, that understand the level of certain things that I see on a daily basis just being here and how we can do certain things in Ghana may be a little different. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's no so direct... There's no way to, is there any way for people to collectively invest in a uh, commercial property together that we then can all, as a co-op, share in, in the rent But I don't know who the all is. Honestly, I don't because like I've had hundreds of people travel with me. Ninety percent of people weren't interested in moving and living and doing that stuff. So it's, it's like it's hard to even say like I have this people want to do this. Um, we, the best group process we have is to get everyone to to get land in a specific area that um, that, that that we have and then. Final, then, then work to then connect together to put our resources together to do other projects. Uh, so that's the way I've seen that it can work. But anyone who sees oh. another way that it can work can do it. Just like I was talking about these people from the Black African Infrastructure Organization. It's like they should be handling some of these calls because they're talking about doing. They're giving people. It's like it's, it's like the talk is not as simple as just going in and doing those things. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely can't do it on the phone for me. I can do things on the phone and things in here because I have people that that we're committed in a certain life and you know we have each other's back and they're as my brother as my brother can be and my business partner as a business partner can be to do certain things that way we have a full spectrum of being here and being here in Ghana and I call people that that the realistic bridge of repatriation you know gotcha. thank you Pomani I had a question sure go ahead Mark there's a quick question about the banks is it, do we need to bring our documentation if we want to open a bank account while we're there, or um, you, what your, you can bring your yeah you have to bring your passport and um, it's um, two photo IDs, um, two um, passport IDs, 
And what you're going to get is a USANA for account at the Black Star Line Credit Union, which is there at all of our conference. And then once you start doing your residency, uh, we can assist you with getting a bank account. Um, and to get the bank account, is just one basic thing, showing that you live at this address and you have a utility bill. Oh, so we won't be able to get one while we're there? Uh, no, I've, I've pulled enough. I've tried to pull and pull as much. I've talked to them. I used to have I, I used to have a deal going with Echo Bank and United Bank of Africa, and I talked to you know, a lot of times in this conversation with their their main branch manager, and I'll explain to them the situation of the people that are coming from Africa and ask for that we love Ghana, we want to live, do business in there. Sometimes I want, sometimes I don't. I think they look at me like he's crazy, he's not serious that they're actually coming and live there. So uh, based on things like money laundering, crazy other things I've gone, it has been a simple situation where it's just hard to get the bank managers to get us access to open up an account and they're saying that it's coming from the top, it's coming from the Ghanaian government. So the process that we have is once you're in the country and you're, you're working on your residency, um, we can get you to, a, you know, we can get you to the, we can get you now to the bank and that's what I have David and a few other people to do and they'll use, you know, even if they have to use someone else's uh, utility bill and things like that, we have a bunch of ways to work it out but they, they want to see that you're actually living in the country now. That makes sense. Thank you. All right. Yes, Bamani, this is Carl J. Keyes, Washington, D.C. Uh, greetings, Carl. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. Uh, two questions. One is, for the, the conference, the investment conference, is there an agenda that will be available prior to making the trip so we can see what topics will be discussed? So the topics, I can say it's the same topics we have. Uh, we have a representation from the Black Star Line Credit Union. Um, and one of the best reference of this is our previous uh, recordings of the investment videos um, on our YouTube investment link. And it literally shows you the whole conference. It's the same agenda. Uh, and, but that's what you have typed okay. up. So it is, um, okay. we usually have one lawyer legal representation, Ghana Investment Promotion, a few people who have repatriated and talk about, explain how it is to move from America and live here. And those are literally the reference of subject. It's, it's supposed to be all, it's all together in repatriation investment. That's what every single person is told of, you know, based on what I tell David to explain to them, are supposed to be there presenting. So food sovereignty, uh, investments in land, uh, investment in factories, and so on. It's a two-hour conference, and everybody's told to get right to the point. So the second question is, um, is, is that conference open to uh, other possible investors? I have a Senegalese friend who lives in France um, who uh, has designed this, uh, th this building structure that's very um, eco-friendly, uh, very inexpensive, and so w we've been talking about uh, – I'm going to be in Ghana in a couple of weeks – um, just to go set some things up and, and, and get in place. Um, and so we're, we're talking about um, the possibility of building some social housing stuff. And so, and it's a very easy system that they can ship in um, and use people in the, in the area to help build and to, 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 to do this housing uh, these housing scenarios. So I, who would I talk to, um, I guess, once I'm there uh, about what we're doing and provide documentation and uh, that kind of thing? So, no, I'm, I'm going to pay my deposit this week. All right, cool. So you're looking to come on the tour. All right, I'm just, I'll just on the yeah. tour. I yeah, mean, I want to be on the tour, but I'll, I'll already be in the country before you guys get there. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, in, in that situation, uh, yes, what I can do is um, uh, me and you will be on the phone with uh, folks in Ghana and talk about it so it's clear. That way they'll be ready to receive you and you and I can go over whatever process of what you want to get ready. If you want to get land, if you want to you know, join the Black Star Line Credit Union, or just whatever you want to do. But, uh, but that's definitely something we can definitely help you with. Okay, cool. Very cool. Thank you. And then also you're saying uh, the, the conference is open to other people, like you were asking about the Senegalese investment. If other people um, show an interest and the energy just want to come and network with us and things, that we're definitely open to that. Uh, the conference is only for black people because I had to kick one or two white people out of the conference in the past. 
Um, so I'm not saying this question, whatever, but you know, when I talk to people, I don't know who people are. So a lot of times I say these things because, and it also it helps you deter the wrong people from coming with us. But yeah, it's, it's just a straight pan, black Pan-African energy. So any of our brothers and sisters from the African diaspora, from the African continent, can come on tours with us or come to our conference. Everything that I do is for my brothers and sisters. And that has obviously caused other issues, but um, you know, it's I, you know you can't please everybody. I'm, I'm with I'm with us, uh, and I'm not trying to do anything else. So when we do the conference, we focus on our internal issues of what we have to do to fix problems, um, and on how we can work on projects directly and make it happen, and not just be like the talkers of the town. That's why people like myself just are not online on YouTube talking about things because. You know, usually if you're doing things, you're busy doing it, and sometimes you're so tired of doing what you're doing, you just you know you don't have time to be on YouTube gossiping. So you know, we got you back on this, and um, um, I'll be talking with you between today and tomorrow. And based on what you're talking to, uh, okay. we'll be connecting with a lot of different people. Okay, and yeah, and my my, my guy, he's a, again he's Senegalese, so he is black, uh, and this, this is, is his own business that he's the. Is a is a is, a, is okay. he into Pan Africanism or is he just? Well, he's a businessman. He's saying he's a business investor from Senegal. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, and he knows most of the people that's in this conference are black people from America, right? <laughs> uh, yes, he knows that. All right, cool. Perfect. Just want to make it clear, um, because yeah, that's, uh, that way, you know, just, uh, I don't like to, for people to be surprised on anything, one, and people just to be clear that oh, just because yeah. we have a group of brothers and sisters from, from the African diaspora it doesn't mean that we just want to come take over the content or take over. It's just we're doing certain things to build a foundation. That way we can work better with our own brothers and sisters. It's hard for us to work with anybody in Africa, any organization, any group in Africa, if we haven't even built a show that we can do certain things. So that's like the internal thing we're trying to fix right now. So that's why this conference is so good. And it's more people than you can even talk to and connect with. I mean, people doing all kinds of things, input. I mean, honestly, I cannot keep up with all the people that are there. Um, and, you know, so... Yeah, so you get it. So that's that, that's a smart move. It's just like staying back later because now you have a head start and you can work on all the preliminary things that you're working on. And there's really no way around it. You because I spent the first several years staying back after the tour. My other business partner escorted everybody back to the U.S. It's the most important thing that you have to do if you're looking to repatriate. And I got so many people that I want to connect you with so you can spend some time at their house and see how they live, see how. You know, that, you know, and you're getting what you're getting this information up front, and then you get the tour aspect off it. But the best way to experience Ghana is experience the tour around the country with us, and then experience us being with someone that you know, lived in lived here in America, and now they live here in Ghana. Because you, you, because no one, whatever question you ask, them, they're going to give you unlimited amount of information. Okay, very good. Thank you. You got, you got, me, you got me excited, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, uh, this, when you text me, just text me your first and last name and your email address, and then uh, you know we'll definitely be talking tomorrow morning or or later on tonight. All right. Okay, uh, good. So let me answer uh, any last questions, uh, family, and um, then we'll close. And then uh, let's, I look forward to just yeah. keeping everybody posted with everything. So go ahead. Yeah. What's up? This is Inobi uh, Bumani. Um, let's just say if um, after the tour everything goes well and there's an interest in staying, um, mm -hmm. how would it work in terms of extending and, and you know, adjusting the itinerary, the flight itinerary? Uh, perfect. Uh, great question. Uh, um, Delta Airlines is going to charge you about $350 to change your date. Uh, it shouldn't be any change in the cost of routes because we're in the same season. Um, and so if you stay extra two weeks, um, you're looking about, uh, you're looking about, in the 300 range, probably closer to the low 300. Uh, if you can tell me what you want to do now, it will save you. You won't. You, you'll save you that money. Like example, if you say that you want to stay extra two weeks, um, once you commit, when I reserve the ticket, I was, I'm reserving the ticket that you want to stay two weeks later. Uh, but once after like October 1st, once all of the money has been transferred to Delta Airlines and they cash out and everything, they literally lock it into where they they only restrict me to changing names. And that's up to a few days, and um, and yeah, I can still do a few basic changes. But once we physically get to the country, that's where that big fee comes in. Mm, okay, okay, got it. That's it. All right, cool, perfect. And you, you, you and I could definitely uh, connect and talk about it. And um, I do my best to work it out for you to where you don't have to make any adjustments. Like if you 
give me like an exact idea of what you want to do and I'll just process and work it out. We can just like say, you know, 10 days would be good based on the time off from work or your flexibility. No problem. Thanks. No, absolutely. All right, family, uh, we're about to close. Uh, I want to open things up for any last question. Hello, Bomani. My name is Serena, and I just found out about this trip. I'm, I'm calling from awesome. Alabama. Is there a... I mean, do I just, is there anything that I miss, I guess? Or do oh, yeah. I just at this point need to? Yeah, um, uh, if you can, your number, if you can text me, your, um, I'm not sure if you have a number, but if you can uh, send me your uh, email address, uh, first and last name, and I'll just add it to the email list and send you the updated emails and the previous conference call recordings, and then you and I can talk about uh, this, uh, the visa and you know, anything that you might have missed. And if you have questions, I'll say jot them down. We'll go through all of them and get you okay. updated and prepared. Uh, right now it is, well, it was 20, it is, right now it's 21 people right now committed to the journey. Uh, just had to transfer another person back to May. So for those who may need to change from November to May or vice versa, the option is still open. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, I'll make the adjustments to the airlines. Uh, I just want everybody to be on the right tour they want to be on. But as far as uh, this one, it is uh, 21, so the bus can hold up to bus can hold up to bus can hold up to about 40 people. It's a um, coach bus, so the numbers are based on that. And as people commit, I'm getting tickets right away because I remember last year. Last year I was able to get tickets for 41 of us, and then the two last people that came in the last two weeks, I had to put them on another airline. And so, but the good thing about the fight came in the same time at the Accra airport, so we were able to see them once we got off. Uh, but my goal is to just make sure all of us have tickets so every single last one of us could be on the same flight on Amsterdam to Ghana, and all of us meet up around you know around the same time. Okay. Hey, one more question here. Well, I have a question. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, do you want to go, uh, Jackson, go ahead. Uh, yes, my wife has another question. Sure. Um. Suppose you decide you don't want to come back. Is that a problem? That's never a problem. Uh, if you don't want to come back, then you have to take yourself to immigration, and uh, I can have one or two people take you there so you can do the stuff you need to do and be clear on it. And, uh, and then I have a few people that's going to tell you all the tricks and techniques about how to stay away from America. <laughs> so somebody so some of these have to be personal conversation because uh, the conversation that we have here is a, it's a recording for YouTube. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. And I'm available to talk. I'm up early in the morning. I'm up until midnight every day, and you know, so I'm available. So the worst is that I may not be available for an hour or two, but you know, I do immediate conversation. We get right to the point and talk about these things. But uh, thanks for okay. everyone's interest on these things. Uh, let me see if I can answer a few more questions. Um, Here, I have a question. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, can you repeat your name? Where you calling from? Yes, my name is Lidani. I'm calling from Vegas. So my question is, um, I have a couple of questions. So the first one, my partner is coming from Puerto Rico. He was not on the call today. He was last time. Um, he bought his ticket where he's supposed to arrive at Atlanta like at 7.30 at night. We're looking to go to May. So do you think um, that is enough time or should he book something earlier to get to Atlanta? All right, uh, great question. I'm going to answer this one. Again. As far as the flights to Atlanta, usually I set the flights to leave at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock on the day of departure. Uh, so, like November 16th, we're leaving in the nighttime. Uh, so, and that also gives, um, like, sometimes it gives anyone coming from other places uh, a chance to connect. Like, if you're coming from Jamaica, so Puerto Rico, you, your, your flights, all those flights usually get in, in the afternoon at Atlanta airport. Uh, there are later flights, but yeah, but the best thing to do is get an earlier flight. Earlier, the better. And then the yeah. So you would recommend that to change that flight from seven because he arrives at seven thirty, and I'm like, you know, that's kind of cutting it. Is we're leaving at ten? <laughs> um, <laughs> you men are optimistic. Women are. I don't that, know. Does, that is that is a legal connection. Uh, because of the flight leaves after ten. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, whenever you can give yourself a little extra breathing room, especially when you're dealing with international networks, because you know, yeah. a flight can be delayed in storms and things like that. So I would definitely recommend international. Try to, instead of getting there three hours, get there six hours. That's what I kind of thought. Like, I'm coming from Vegas, but I am planning on being there, like, by three. So. 
Lindani, one of the things I do with reservations is you just have to let me know what airport you are close to. And what I do, the flights are not always the same price, but that's, we just sell a package that includes a flight. So you, you can save yourself money for, if you, and avoid connections flights. The flights that we can cover for connections are flights from Hawaii, um, Alaska, Puerto Rico, the different parts of the Caribbean, only like the 40-something uh, states in America. Uh, so, so basically, when we are trying to book, we should tell you where we're coming from because I'm in Vegas now and he's in Puerto Rico. Um, as far as him for Puerto Rico, um, we, I can definitely before you don't buy any tickets or anything yet because usually I, want, I like to run that by our, our group department so I can get because what I like to do is just have everything sequenced on your flight. So if okay. you fly from wherever in the world, all your flights are on Delta KLM and it connects baggage. Everything works. You don't have to go down here do this that. It just make life simple and smooth. Uh, everyone, yeah, because we, we were planning on, um, just because of that, we were planning on just bringing carry-on, so we will make our lives easier, given that we have connecting flights, and I also wanted to ask you, like, um, we were thinking we are not set yet of staying in extra days in Amsterdam when we come back. Can you arrange that for us, too? Absolutely, without a doubt, and uh, the best way we do that is once you're ready to commit, we just get that done right away, and then you get your verification of um, your, your flight uh, schedule and, and receipt and everything. That way we confirm those details, and then I'll just make notes of it, of who is staying longer and things like that. And it's usually not a lot of people, so it's a simple thing. But uh, okay. we try to just do all of the bookings and then save, because the worst thing is when you deal with people who have groups and they tell you, oh, everybody show up in there. Like, I hate going to New York. It's it's like I right, why well, do I need to buy another ticket to go to New York anyway? It, flight routing, you know, we have flights all over the world. Flight planes are moving every single minute all over the world. So the people who are doing trips and reserving, they have to, you know, and I call people out. You know, they need to do some more work and make sure save your brothers and sisters some money that way you can spend more of it in Africa. Yeah. You know so so, you know, so we would live, we have literally cut out of the cut out a lot of energy of making the airlines richer because what end up happening is that. The, the you know it's just they're gonna you get you know, they want another three four hundred dollars for a connection flight and then, yeah. that's what I was looking at yeah thank you um let me see I think those were all basically my questions oh another one um is it okay also if I go to DC how long if I show up at the Ghana embassy in DC would they be able to help me with my visa well they'll, they'll let you drop it off to them but you have to get everything done so. What you can do is just um, text me your first and last name, I got right, and, and then um, your email address, and I'll have that in the morning for my morning work, also with everything else, to get you all the details as far as the process and print all your paperwork out, and then you and I will go through it and you fill, you know fill it out. And as far as Puerto Rico, whatever country you come from, you have to literally find the Ghana embassy there. Like I have, I have a family of three coming from Germany, and I've got them information for the, the German embassy, but sometimes those paperwork are different and. They made it ask for like okay. an invitation letter, which I usually have here set up to ready to write that invitation letter. That way, they can use it for the, the consulate or the embassy. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, All right uh, family. Uh, let me answer the last few questions. We're gonna close. Um, I did meet a few people back. Uh, if you can uh, press star six to unmute yourself and then um, give your name, where you're calling from, and let's uh, answer your question. Yes, Nefertari, and I'm from Houston, Texas. And I'm looking forward to going to the trip. On, I'm trying my best if everything lines up right with my business to be on the trip in uh, November for my birthday. Awesome, absolutely. Um, you know, we love celebrating birthdays. So, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about what we have. We have some incredible nightlife and social life, even on the resort. When we're all by ourselves and just enjoying the music in the tropics. So, you now we'll make that a special birthday for you. Look Thank forward. you coming true. Well, it's my 50th birthday, so that would be nice. Thank you. Awesome. Absolutely. Let's, all, let's, let's celebrate your energy. And anybody who, you know, who's there on the trip with us and want to talk about their birthday, usually, you know, we just chill up my love. It's, you know, it's, it's, I spent several, several of my birthdays here in Ghana. It's a very special time. I don't, when I'm here, it's, you know, I'm not even thinking about celebrating that. I'm just working. Thank you, Bramani. Absolutely. All right, Sammy, uh, does anyone have any last minute questions? I see one person here. Let's go to our sister. Greetings, my sister, Yakisha. How are you? We're about to close, and I'm surprised you didn't have a question, so I just want to see how, how is everything going with you. 
All right, perfect. I can hear you nice and clear. Okay. If you can repeat what you say now. Uh, no, I'm just said I am just ready for the journey of a lifetime. Just excited. Absolutely, absolutely, and we're gonna build this energy. You know, we're gonna build the you know, build the energy of repatriation and investment to the highest level. You know what I mean, I had to I had to shut these. I had to shut this punk down from the BAIO and all these other letters uh, earlier this earlier today, and you know, so I, I've, I've been I've been pumped, man. It's, it's it's crazy. It's like it's like you here here at your office working. It's Sunday, you know. I should probably be somewhere else, you know. Um, you know, but I'm here in my office working, and you know, people are playing games, you know, talking about what they're gonna do, you know. So anyway, we have some great energy going to Ghana. We're ready for you. Um, you know, the, the land deals are going through real good, so we definitely look forward to you and other people connecting, getting the land and getting the building and getting things flowing. You know, build some real black African infrastructure and not talk about it. Most definitely. <laughs> All right, my sister, so uh, let me uh, meet you back uh, and see if anybody, have, anybody else have any questions before we close. Greetings. Uh, greetings. Uh, can you uh, um, give your name? Where you calling from? This is Terrain from Brooklyn, New York. Greetings, sister. How are you? I'm doing good, brother Vermani. Uh, I'm looking forward to taking a trip. I don't think I would make the November, but hopefully the May trip. Uh, but I have one quick question before you close tonight. As sure, far ahead. as health care goes, um, do, what, is, what is the health care, what's the quality of health care in Ghana? Uh, if, if someone comes and they have any type of health issues and they want to repatriate, you know, is it as good as the United States or it's better or worse? What can you yeah, as far as hardcore, as far as hardcore hospital, you know, um, America has, you know, America has it going for itself. Um, Ghana is more natural medicine and um, more prevention than anything else. So, when you're in Ghana, you have everything that you need in the country to live a healthy, wonderful, secure life. Now, if it, you get into accident, you break your leg, yeah, they do have a hospital that's going to fix you up. Is it going to be nice as how it is in America? No. So the solution that people like myself have, along with everything else, is to get the best of our people in the country. And when we build these communities, we build the different infrastructure that's needed, the power plants, uh, the different hospitals, as much as we can do around it. And that's why I, I'm, I get like frustrated when people just talk about, you know, about certain things because it's like we need these things in Africa, and it's like talking about them on YouTube and playing around. It's, and it's like I take it's like it's serious stuff because. There's a lot of people that want to move to Ghana, and they tell me, well, money, I won't move, I won't do this because this is not there. And then, so we're scrambling, trying our best to set things up. And I do understand where people come from. You work hard here in your life, you have, you have your comfort here, and you want certain things. So we have been there in Ghana just trying to make things as organized as best as possible for our folks. Uh, I've worked with some few communities. Unfortunately, it, it, some of them have failed, like Fiancra, but it's, you know, it's a never-ending fight to make sure that we don't want to have people getting on planes on a regular basis going to Europe and America because they need certain medical procedures. So unfortunately, the best doctors on the continent is not there. They're here in America and Europe because they chose the salary over certain things, which I don't, I, you know, no one can blame people for choosing a better way of life and things like that. But we're trying to change that by trying to get more and more of our own folks here. Um, so I've reached out to a lot of my military guys and tell them, oh, you guys have the experience, let's do this in Africa, you know, do this in Africa just like we did it for the white people. Uh, in, in the military, so you know it's a lot of things that that is in place and being worked on. But uh, and it, different parts of Ghana, you have more and more healthcare facilities being built to provide better level of healthcare. But you know they still, you know the country still need time, and you know it just need more people to be dedicated to fixing these problems. But um, you're good to move there, and you you know we'll make sure you're taken care of as best as you can. And if something needs to be done to you, we have to send you back to Europe or America. Unfortunately, we, we're not. It's a situation where some of us have to do that. I have people there that um, they're, they have the veteran benefits. They're in the military, and, they're, and they'll come back here, and they'll go to the VA hospital and get certain things done. But, um, you know, that's a, that's a future thing in Ghana where we'll, you know, we'll, I can see us building more of where our people feel safe, but knowing that they can get the best health care in the world there. 
Thank you. And thanks for your question. All right, family, I've helped everyone up long enough. It's uh, 8.30, so um, we've been running for about 90 minutes. So, family, what I'm going to do is I'll be editing a conference call this week. It may take me a few days to edit it because I have a lot of projects here and things to get done, especially since we're leaving out in less than three months. So um, um, bear with me, but uh, all of the conference calls, except for this one, is, is a little similar, but um, it will be out on YouTube, so you can listen and play back, and if you have any questions, and so uh, you can just reach back out. So family, uh, appreciate everybody's energy. Enjoy the rest of your beautiful Sunday night, and we are looking forward to connecting with, with you uh, here in Ghana in November and May. And uh, definitely, uh, folks who are interested in South Africa, just uh, reach out to me directly, and uh, we'll communicate. So everyone that's supposed to send uh, send text messages or emails, you know, either way is fine. Text or email with your information, please send it. That way, I can see it in my inbox in the morning and start working on it for you. So, family, once again, this is Bomani Tamba, and um, you know, thank you for your energy. And we're going to lead this energy to where we build the things that we need to build for ourselves in Africa and. Ghana is one of those starting countries. So thank everybody for being a part of this energy. All right, so everybody, uh, good night.